In a previous video we showed how you can take a dialog component and create uh, a table that uh, matches the structure of the dialog component and we used uh, this example dialog over here uh, in which case the uh, the dialog was a very simple dialog and uh, we created a single table from this dialog struct uh, structure but now let's take um, a, a much more complex dialog as an example um, one that has repeating sections so we took this dialog over here which is a uh, customer name and address dialog and uh, we converted it uh, into a dialog that has uh, repeating sections so you can see here we still have the customer um, uh, name section over here in the so-called header uh, but then uh, we have a repeating section where we can specify multiple customer addresses so you can see here we've got uh, a drop down that has the address type and uh, um, we're actually getting all of our data validation errors uh, popping up as we uh, go through this here um, but you can ignore that and uh, and what we'd like to demonstrate in in this video now is how we can automatically create uh, two tables uh, from this dialog structure one table that has the customer name in it and then another table that has the um, address information in it. So let's go back now to design mode and you can see here's our, our, our dialog and uh, there's the repeating section from, from there to there that contains the uh, addresses. And what we'd like to do is uh, bind um, this, di this dialog to tables but first create uh, the corresponding tables. So we're going to go first now to our data binding menu and we want to create new tables to match the structure of the dialog and we'll go now to uh, define table and aliases and you can see now that um, the genie here has automatically analyzed the dialog and seen that this dialog contains two logical sections it contains the top level and then it contains one repeating section. Now a dialog can have many repeating sections, not just one, uh, in which case they would all be listed over here. So now uh, we are going to basically create um, uh, a table for the top level and then another table for the uh, repeating section. So let's go here to the top level and add an alias and we can call this um, alias over here, um, say uh, customer header and then let's call this alias over here uh, customer addresses so we'll go there and type in customer addresses now next we need to specify how um, the customer addresses alias is linked to uh, the top level customer header so we go there and we specify the linking field and we can go there and choose customer ID so um, each record in the customer addresses alias will be linked to the corresponding uh, record in the top level in the customer header table on this customer ID field. So now what you can see uh, is Alpha 5 is now showing me all of the fields in each of the aliases. So in the top level alias uh, customer header we have these fields customer ID, first name, last name and company and in the customer address alias we have these fields address type, address, uh, city, state and, and zip. So for each field now we need to specify what the actual f uh, field size is. So uh, the customer ID field we want that to be say numeric say 5 with uh, no decimal places is fine and then let's take all three of these fields and just make them uh, 30 characters in, in size. Now let's go to the next alias uh, cust um, customer addresses and we have all these fields here uh, which are bound now to the customer addresses alias so we'll select all of them and make them all uh, 30 characters and then just go back to say state and override that with 2 and then go to zip and override that with 5. So now we've defined all of the fields for the top level alias and the repeating section over here and we can now move on to the next step. Uh, so now we can specify what type of table we'd like to create. So let's pause now and pick this up in the next video.